This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Dope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound under our bones rattling. Pentecostal fire.
celebrate our fabulous Easter morning and our God who did everything to make our relationship with him right. So whether it is your first time here, your first time in a long time, or whether you call Forward Church your home, we are so glad to have you here today as we celebrate the fact that the tomb is empty, Christ is risen, and death has been defeated. Let's celebrate and praise our God together. my story, this might be yours. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, the chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healer.
was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time Sin separated The breach was far too wide But from the far side of
Amen. Amen. Please be. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. He is risen. Amen. What an amazing morning. I love Easter weekend. I love Easter Sunday. It is, quite honestly, my favorite day of the whole year. In just a few minutes, we're going to have a whole bunch of people get baptized today and celebrate their faith in Jesus. And I I believe there might even be a few more of you who are going to get baptized today. You just don't know it yet. All right, let's, uh, let's pray as we get started. Heavenly Father, we come to you today so grateful for the gift of your Son and what he has done for us. I pray that in these next few minutes, you would help us to see how great your love is towards us. And that you would move our hearts to respond to your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've been joining with us at all over the last few months, uh, either in person or online, then you know we have been talking about a quest that every single person has, a, a desire, a hunger to find meaning and purpose and significance in life. We've been walking through the book of Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament and looking at a man who had everything. He had wisdom and money and fame and family, and yet he still looks back on his life and he says, I find all of it to be meaningless. I find all of it to be empty. Well, today we're going to put a pause button in the book of Ecclesiastes, but we're going to continue exploring this idea of a search for meaning. So if you have a Bible, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If you need a Bible, there might be a Bible in the seat underneath of you. It's on page 1025 on that Bible, and you can open up there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, just as you're opening that up, let me tell you a little story of something that happened just over 100 years ago in January of 1920. One of the worst trades in the history of sports took place. The Boston Red Sox traded Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees. For a price of $100,000. Babe Ruth went on, of course, to become one of the all-time greats in the game of baseball, leading the Yankees to several World Series championships. But that's only part of the story of what made this trade so bad. The trade was even worse than it appears on the surface because the owner of the Red Sox was a guy named Harry Frazee. And Harry, in addition to his love for baseball, loved Broadway. He loved Broadway shows. He loved Broadway uh, uh, theater, and he invested heavily into Broadway theater, and there was one particular show that he really wanted to bring to Broadway. The problem was he had no cash to make it happen. So Harry contacted the New York Yankees, who just gave him $100,000 for Babe Ruth, and said, hey, could I borrow $300,000 from you to help pay for this show to happen? So he did. He borrowed $300,000 from them. Within five years, the New York Yankees received nearly three times as much money from the owners of the Red Sox as what they paid for Babe Ruth. In essence, the Red Sox paid the Yankees to take Babe Ruth. It is one of the most historic and one-sided exchanges in the history of sports, but it is still so small compared to the exchange that we reflect on during Easter weekend. What Jesus has done for you has the power to transform your past, your present, and your future. See, Easter is the story of Jesus exchanging his life for your life. That's what it says in verse 21 of chapter 5. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Verse 21 is telling us that when Jesus died, he was treated as if he was you. If you want to get an idea of what your lies and your selfishness and your pride and your lust and your anger and any other sin, if you want to get an idea of what your sin deserved, look at what Jesus experienced on Good Friday. 
Jesus, the one who knew no sin, who was without any sin, became your sin. And in return, you receive his righteousness. For, for those who believe in Jesus, you are made right with God. There are no add-ons. There are no good works that are required to earn your way there. It is an incredibly great exchange that happens. And as we saw on Good Friday, what is wrong with the world can be made right. And what is missing in the world can be recovered because this is what Jesus does. This is such a radically different worldview than any other. Most other religions live in the space of how do you focus on earning your way to be right with God? Society tells you this is the only life you're going to live, so create the best life that you can. But Jesus comes and he exchanges his life for yours. And then three days later, he is raised back to life. Death cannot keep him down. And some people have wondered, like, did the resurrection really happen? Is that true part of the story? But the Bible tells us that more than 500 people witnessed him to be alive when he was supposed to be dead. Yes, Jesus is alive. This is why Easter Sunday is such a big deal. On this day, we celebrate the reality that God is ultimately a God of life. He is the creator who puts breath in your lungs. And he is the conqueror of death who gives you the hope of eternal life. The bad news is that your sin deserves God's judgment. The good news is that the death and resurrection of Jesus are the way for you to be given his life instead. Now, if Jesus would leave heaven to come to earth, to go through everything that he went through, if he would exchange his life for your life, what does that tell you about him? Here's what I think it tells us. He loves you more than you can possibly imagine. Many of us have heard those words maybe hundreds or thousands of times. But I want you to know, this is not an abstract idea. That this is the reality of the heart of God for you. No matter who you are or how much attention you have ever paid to God in your life, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus is the evidence of how much he loves you. But let me ask you a question today. What difference does the love of Jesus make in your life beyond Easter Sunday? You see, hearing somebody say God loves you is very, very different than knowing in your heart that you are loved by God. Does the fact that Jesus loves you make any difference beyond today? Well, the guy who wrote this part of the Bible came face to face with the exact same question. The Apostle Paul was a man who at one time had his whole life planned out. He knew exactly where he was going. He knew exactly where he was going to find meaning and purpose with his life. He likely came from a family who had some wealth. He was very well educated. He was passionate about his religion and his faith, the Jewish faith. He was so convinced about his faith and his religious beliefs that he saw anyone who taught something different to be a threat, especially those people who believed in Jesus, which is why he persecuted Christians so much. He thought that his life had purpose and meaning and clear direction until one day Jesus stopped him dead in his tracks. And on that day when Jesus stopped him dead in his tracks, Jesus, first of all, calls out the sin in Saul's life and says, why are you persecuting me? And then in the same breath, tells Paul that I died for you and I love you and I came to rescue you. See, for Paul, this was not just an emotional moment. He had to give it some serious thought. If Jesus really took your place, if the resurrection of Jesus is true, if you're forgiven and have eternal life, then what is that going to mean for the way that you approach every day of your life? And the conclusion that Paul came to is this. A meaningful life is only found in exchanging your life for the life of Jesus. Look at verse 14 and 15. He says, For the love of Christ compels us, 
since we have reached this conclusion that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. This guy is so overwhelmed by how much Jesus has loved him that he, just from the very core of his being, is is like, I have to respond. I have to do something. But what's the best way to respond to the love of Jesus? You just say a quick prayer, hey, thanks God, and kind of move on with the rest of your life? Do you, like, ah, better throw some money in the offering, and then I can just kind of go on, make things right financially between me and God? Do I just show up for some religious activities every now and then? No, the only solution that Paul can come up with is that the only way you can respond to the love of Jesus is to give up living for yourself and to live for Jesus instead. He he describes it this way in the book of Philippians. He says, for me to live is Christ, that Jesus becomes the center of everything in my life. He's not an add-on that I think about every now and then. He becomes the one that my entire life revolves around. Now, I I want to make sure that you understand and get the order straight because sometimes as people who kind of connect to religion, we hear challenges like this and we're like, okay, I've got to do more because the more I do, then the more God's going to love me and I'll be okay. The more, if I do more, the more I do, the more that God's going to like just show like, hey, yeah, I knew I didn't make a mistake by saving this person. But what Paul is saying is this. If you receive God's love for you, then you will change. It's not, if I change, then God's going to love me more. You start by receiving God's love for you, and then the change comes. One of the things that we talk about here at Forward is that following Jesus is a way of life. It's not a program that we attend. It's not only about coming to church on Sunday. It's not a to-do list of things that we check off to show God how much we please him. But the reason why we follow Jesus is not out of religious activity or some sense of duty. It's because we know we have been loved by the God of the universe. And in just a few minutes, you are going to see a bunch of people baptized who have come to this same conclusion. I have received God's love for me. And for the rest of my life, I want to exchange my life for his life. That's what baptism represents. When, when, when you go under the water, it represents a physical reality of something that's already happened inside of you spiritually. You're going under the water, you're being buried with Christ, and you're coming back up and saying, I no longer live for myself, I live for the one who gave his life for me. Now, I know that this isn't easy, because if we're honest, most of us, live from a different perspective. We live with this idea. I'm going to figure out what makes me happy, and I'm going to do that. Friends, listen. At worst, living for what makes you happy can hurt you and the people around you. At best, living for what makes you happy is short-term. Because the thrill will die off one day, or you'll ultimately reach the end of your life and die. But the resurrection of Jesus shows us that he's not limited by this life. Like, if this life is all there is to life, then by all means, go ahead and just live however you want to live and do whatever makes you happy. But Jesus did rise from the dead, and so he changes the goal from living for all you can get in this life to living for something much bigger. Now, when you go to exchange your life for the life of Jesus, it's not a one-time decision. It's not like you wake up one day and go, I'm just going to exchange my life for the life of Jesus. It's a day-to-day decision. Salvation is a one-time decision. You, You put your faith in Jesus, you are rescued from the power of sin in your life once and for all. There are no other sacrifices that need to be made. But choosing to follow Jesus is a day to day decision that we all have to make with our lives. It's what Jesus means when when he says, If anyone wants to follow me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross, how often? Daily. Not once a week, once a year. 
Take up his cross daily and follow me. It's a daily decision to say yes to Jesus. It's a journey. It's a process called sanctification where you and I, we're growing to think and believe and behave and desire more and more the life of Jesus. And as you exchange your life for his life, Jesus is going to begin to define every part of your life. He's going to begin to change you. Here's what you can expect to see. Verse 16 tells us that you can expect to see that your view of relationships are going to change. The way that you're approaching the people around you is going to change. You're no longer going to see the people at a surface level and go, man, that person's really annoying and bugs me and I want nothing to do with them anymore. He is the God who helps you to see people beyond the surface, beyond the physical, to see their heart, to see the state of their soul. He's going to change the way you approach the relationships in your life. We, we will become people who are filled with both grace and truth in our relationships. He's going to help you to forgive the people who have wronged you. He's going to help you to love the people around you. He's going to help you to be filled with humility to the people around you. You are going to do things that build other people up and show your love for them. You're going to be filled with more love, more peace, more gentleness and goodness and patience, all the things that will help you build meaningful relationships on this earth. It's not just your relationships that will impact. It will impact your entire life. That's what verse 17 starts to tell us that the old has passed away and the new has come. So many of us are held down by our past, whether it's things that have been done to you or things that you have done to others. The past is something that is such a powerful force in our lives. And when Christ becomes your life, the past no longer needs to define you because you are defined by Jesus. You, are, you can be completely forgiven of every sin you have ever committed. You can be set free from the shame that you carry. You are everything Jesus says you are if you put your faith in Jesus. Having Jesus shape how you approach your life is not only going to impact your past, it's actually going to impact everything about your day-to-day life now. He's going to change how you make decisions. He's going to change how you value things in life, what's important to you. He's going to show you just how short-sighted it is to create your own happiness when there is eternal life waiting for you. And then exchanging your life for his is going to impact one more part of your life. It's going to change your very purpose for living. In verses 18 to 20, We are told by the Apostle Paul that we are people, if we have put our faith in Jesus, we are people who have experienced what it means to be reconciled to God. And that now God gives to us the ministry of reconciliation. When you exchange your life for the life of Jesus, then the purpose of Jesus becomes your purpose in life. And what we know is this. Jesus came so that you could be reconciled to God. But he did not come so that only you could be reconciled to God. Instead, he calls you to be his ambassadors on this earth. If you are a follower of Jesus today, then your purpose is to make more disciples of Jesus. That's your purpose. I know some of you think my purpose is to be a mom or a dad or a plumber or an electrician or a lawyer or a business leader. And those things are all good things. Those are all positive things that we all need to be, but they are just simply an expression of our ultimate purpose of being people who are making disciples of Jesus, who carry with us the ministry of reconciliation to God in this world. Jesus will define your purpose, and he's going to bring you into a greater purpose than any other purpose can give you, because it's a purpose that has eternal implications. The most meaningful life that you can experience is the one that brings you into a story that matters for eternity. And that's what Jesus calls you to when he says, follow me. Friends, listen, I I don't know why you are here today. Some of you maybe are here to celebrate with some family members who are getting baptized. Some of you are here uh, because somebody uh, brought you to church this morning, and we're, we're glad that you are here.
But I'm asking you all to consider, no matter why you're here or joining us online, how are you going to respond to the love that Jesus has for you? Some of us, many of us, are already Christians. We're already believers in Jesus. And we know the right words to say, and we know the right things to do. But if we were honest, sometimes we don't give a whole lot of thought to God beyond Sunday. Some of us who are Christians, we're, we still feel stuck in our sin and our shame, and we're trying harder and harder. How do I stop doing these things? And I want you to know, the focus shouldn't be, how do I stop doing these things? The focus is, how do I say yes to Jesus? Because Jesus is the only way out of your sin. And if you've received the love of Jesus in your life, then hear the words of Jesus, follow me. When you came in today, you all received a brochure. And that brochure outlines a number of things that are happening in our church over the next few months. And one of the reasons why we wanted you to have that brochure today is because we want to challenge you to hear the words of Jesus of follow me and encourage you to say, what steps am I going to take to continue growing as a follower of Jesus? This doesn't end until you and I reach our final breath on earth. It is a constant journey all the days of our life to say yes to Jesus. Some of you are here today, and you've never responded to Jesus at all. You're, this is all brand new to you. This is all kind of maybe weird to you a little bit. But I want you to hear this if you hear nothing else. Jesus came 2,000 years ago on the other side of the world to die on a cross because he loves you. Because he loves you. Sitting in this room, watching online, in Ontario, Canada, right now, 2,000 years ago, he died because he loves you. And today, if you've never, ever come to a place of trusting Jesus, of putting your faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, I want to invite you to do that. I want to invite you to respond to his love right where you are. You can just close your eyes and you can pray just from quietly in your own heart and just say something like this, Father, I pray that you would forgive me of my sins. I trust Jesus and all that he's done for me. Come and live in my life and give me new life in Jesus' name. And the Bible says that if you believe in Jesus, you're given the right to be called the child of God. Some of you have said a prayer to believe in Jesus, but maybe that's as far as you've gone. Maybe you can relate to Christina's story that we're going to share with you right now. Hello, my name is Christina Simmons. I was born and raised as... Hello, my name is Christina Simmons. I was born and raised as a Protestant but never fully understanding what that meant, other than living by the Ten Commandments and believing that I would end up going to heaven to be reunited with God, as all good Christians do, because Christ died for our sins. If someone would have asked me if I had a relationship with Christ, I would have just simply said, well, I believe in him, if that's what you mean. I've had quite a lot of tragic situations in my life, and I've always struggled with how to deal with them. It almost always led me away from God, not that I stopped believing totally, but I always ended up with more doubts than faith. It always seemed to be more of an on and off kind of relationship with myself and my faith, but was somehow always drawn back to the church, which did feel right for the most part, but could not understand the pull that Jesus had on me. The worst tragedy of my life happened four years ago, on April 17th, 2020, when Craig, my husband and the father of our daughter, Emily, who was only 16 at the time, passed away unexpectedly at the age of 47. He was the love of my life, my soulmate, a devoted father, and such a kind, loving person with a genuine and compassionate heart. The struggle was so real and too much for me to deal with, so I started to stray further and further away from my faith in Christ than ever before. I even started drinking more than I'd like to admit, as it was a way for me to escape and ease the pain a little, although it never did. My best friend had been invited by her son and his family to attend forward, so she started coming and was telling me about it. And that she thought I should come out some Sunday and check it out. 
as she thought it might be good for me. I wasn't too open to the idea at first, but then thought, why not? It couldn't hurt. I started attending Forward in February of 2023 and have been coming ever since. It was the best decision I have ever made. I have found a new life with Jesus that I never even realized was possible. I feel like I am reconnecting with Jesus and I am coming to a new understanding of what true Christianity is and what it means to be a follower of Jesus. I have, always, I have been truly blessed with all the love and support, not only Christ, but with also other fellow Christians here and how everyone has had a hand in my new journey by opening up my heart and my soul to accept the Holy Spirit and I am ready to commit myself to Jesus and live the rest of my days as a true Christian and devoted disciple of Jesus. If you are here today and you have put your faith in Jesus, even if you've just done it in the last few seconds, and you have not yet been baptized, this is your moment. We're going to sing a song in just a moment, and if God is stirring inside of you that today is your day to be baptized, I'm going to invite you just to head out the back doors if you're down here on the main floor, or if you're upstairs, just come on down into the main lobby, and we will have someone meet you there and help you get set up for baptism. Yes, we have change of clothes for you, so don't be afraid to take this step today to follow Jesus in the waters of baptism. Let's stand and let's sing this song together. Go ahead and respond if God's moving you. Go ahead and go out the back doors for baptism. <laughs>
Amen, amen. Please be seated as we see some beautiful stories of how God is at work. Good morning, church. My name is Emily Simmons. I'm 20 years old, and I've been coming to Forward off and on for around a year. I was baptized when I was a baby, but somewhere along the line in life, I lost my faith and struggled with my relationship with God. That struggle was majorly worsened and more challenging after my dad passed away in 2020. Since then, I've been missing the close relationship I used to feel with God, and I want and need that back. I was hesitant on getting baptized today as I felt the pressure of not being the perfect Christian, but I've come to realize that there is no better time and that I'm making the decision for myself and promising to be the best version of myself I can be for him. Today, I'm so excited for a refresh and I'm willing and ready to continue my relationship with Jesus for the rest of my life. I want to quickly thank everyone who has made me feel welcome at Forward and who has helped me get to this point. Thank you to my best friends and my family for being here today to support me, and thank you, Brittany. I'm so grateful that you're the one performing my baptism as you have been by my side since the first time at Forward. Today, I promise to trust in God, to understand that I'm on his path, and to believe that one day I will call heaven my home. I will try to live my life to its fullest, being the child that God wants me to be. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what an honor, what an honor it's been to just hear your mom's testimony and then to have you make this decision today. It's been an honor to just have a front row seat to what God's been doing in your life. So, Emily, have you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? And is it your desire to follow him all the days of your life? And it's on this profession of faith that I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Awesome. This is, this is my friend Jonathan. I am super excited to baptize him today. Uh, it's been amazing what God's already used Jonathan uh, to do in his life. Uh, he's got such a heart for service, and we are super fantastic, awesome, pleased that he's in our preteen and serving uh, with our kids' programs. Yeah. And I know God's got big plans for Jonathan in his life. So, Jonathan, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Is it your desire to follow him all the days of your life? Upon your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, this tag team baptism, me and Brett, all right. So this is Tegan Pilkington. Uh, we've known each other a little bit, Natty, and it's been uh, such a joy to watch you You've always been a bundle of fun, but you've started to take your relationship with Jesus so much more seriously, and it is a joy to watch. And so we've got a couple of questions. Tegan, have you placed your faith in Jesus alone for the salvation from your sins? And is it your intention to follow him every step, every day of your life? On your profession of faith, Brittany gets to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, Samantha Stewart in the tank in front of me here and it was a joy to read your story and what God's doing in your life and how uh, he's used Eric and Julie to help uh, bring you to this point and it's a joy to be able to baptize you this morning Samantha so have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and is it your desire to follow him all the days of your life all right then I baptize you in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit my friend John here, and he's going to get baptized today. John and I met a couple months ago at a prayer and worship night here at the church, and he has such a great story. He was baptized as an infant, and just as he discovered faith on his own and has come to know Jesus, uh, he has made the decision that he would like to take this step today to declare his love and allegiance to Jesus. So, John, a couple questions for you, man. First of all, have you put your faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins? 
And is it your desire to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Absolutely. Then I have the privilege of baptizing you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congrats, man. Congrats. This is Stephanie Vandermeulen, and uh, Steph, in her story, I was just reading how you're sharing how God is just at work in new and fresh ways, especially over the last couple years of your life. It's so exciting to read, and that you desire to just kind of proclaim your desire to follow him through baptism today. So, Stephanie, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And is it your desire to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. Then upon your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Cheetah. Cheetah came into my office uh, a couple of weeks ago just glowing because God had spoken to her about being baptized and she said, I have no choice. I have to be baptized and I want to follow the Lord in obedience. And she said, I, 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 God even gave me a bit of a vision to, to see myself being baptized amongst the community of the people who love me and have supported me in my faith journey. And Cheetah, here they are. There they are. Beautiful. Cheetah, have you trusted in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. And is it your desire to walk with him in obedience all the days of your life? Absolutely. Then on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, this is Kathleen or Katie Heaton. Uh, this is a very special day because Katie is my oldest daughter. And Katie, we have, your mother and I have really one prayer for your life. And that comes from Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. That you would trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. So I got two questions for you, Katie. Have you placed your faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins? And is your desire to walk with him all the days of your life? It is my pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I think it's so cool that Stuart, my friend here, is getting baptized in a series called Searching for Meaning because when I first met Stuart, he gave me a copy of the book he had written, which really was a deep dive into his philosophical journey to find meaning and purpose, and in, so, in doing that, he found Jesus Christ. All roads led to Jesus. And I thought of Colossians when I thought of the supremacy of Christ. And here's Paul's prayer, and this is for you, Stuart. Uh, and so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Stuart, have you accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? And is it your desire to follow him all the days of your life? Yep. Awesome. Then based on this profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Julian, we're so pleased that you made a decision, the most important decision in your life, to be here today. And I got this one scripture reading for you that I picked out from Ephesians 3, verses 16 to 19. I pray that out of the glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide 
and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to all the measure of fullness of God. Now, Julian, I have to ask you, do you place your faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins? Do you desire to follow him all the days of your life? Okay. On your profession of faith, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We got Ethan here today, and uh, I've had the privilege of seeing Ethan as a grade 12 and now in the young adults and walking alongside him as well as with other people from this church, and I get to baptize him today. So, Ethan, I got a few questions for you. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And it is your desire to follow him the rest of your days? Yes. So, Ethan, I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. hear her story and it's so great to have her here to be baptized by Larry who has been instrumental in her journey today. So Christina I'm going to ask you a couple questions and then Larry is going to baptize you. We already heard your profession of faith but have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And is it your desire to follow him all the days of your life? Absolutely. Then upon your profession of faith Larry is going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So uh, the friends that invited Christina are about to jump in the tank with her. Uh, so this is Sherry, and over there is Barry, and they are the parents of Larry. Yes. <laughs> Amazing, right? Uh, this is also Ange uh, and daughter-in-law, and we have been so excited. Sherry, we have prayed for this for a couple of years now, and... To see this moment is just such an overwhelming joy. So a couple of quick questions. Sherry, have you placed your faith in Jesus alone for the salvation? Is it your intent to walk every day the rest of your life in obedience to him? Yes. On your profession of faith, Angela gets to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'll you got this one, Larry? So, Barry, we too have prayed for you, friend. It has been a joy to watch you learn to walk in greater obedience to Jesus and to do that uh, with Larry walking hand in hand with you. And so it's an honor to watch him get to baptize you today. So a couple of quick questions. Barry, have you placed your faith in Christ alone for salvation? Yes. Is it your intention to follow him every day the rest of your life? <laughs> then on that profession of faith, Larry gets to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> It has been a privilege to journey with you over the past seven years and to see you grow stronger in your relationship with God and to take this very special step of being baptized. The verse Erica has chosen is Psalm 104, 31 to 34. The last verse says, I will rejoice in the Lord. 
Okay, Crystal and I have two questions to ask. We've got to make sure we do them right. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord? So is this your desire to follow him all the days of your life? So on your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, I am here with Antonio. Antonio just responded today to be baptized. And uh, he talks about how, is it Lainey, who's had a big impact in your life? Is that who it is? And your mom, too? Yeah, so it's awesome. And uh, put his faith in Jesus many years ago, and today's the day you're saying yes to being baptized. So let me ask you a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, have you placed your faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins? And is it your desire to follow Jesus every day for the rest of your life? All right, based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations, guys. And I have Everett up here with me, and Everett has also decided today that he wanted to be baptized. He also wanted to recognize just the impact that his grandma Alice has had in his life and his decision to follow Jesus and be baptized today. So, Everett, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And is it your desire to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. Then upon your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I am here with Derek, who has also just decided to be baptized today. <laughs> Derek is a brand new follower of Jesus. He came to faith in January of this year. And yeah. so we are so excited for you, man, and welcome to the family of God. Uh, we want to give a shout out to uh, Larry and Angela and Cole and Cruz and Nash and all the love that you, they have shown to uh, Derek over this time and pointing him to Jesus. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Larry and give him the honors to baptize. I'll ask the questions and then we'll go from there. Uh, Derek, have you put your faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. And is it your desire to follow Jesus every day for the rest of your life? Yes. All right, then on your profession of faith, Larry gets to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Did you try to hold him under for a few yeah, extra yeah, seconds? I <laughs> So this is uh, Jermaine. Um, he also decided today uh, to be baptized. Yesterday he was, uh, <laughs> just last week he was saying that uh, he wanted to get baptized and then came today not knowing that it was a baptism service, so here we are today. <laughs> and uh, crazy uh, story here, Jermaine. Um, I was sitting here not knowing you were going to be baptized today, and God put on my heart to prepare a verse for someone. So here it is. <laughs> Uh, pay attention, O Jacob, for you are my servant, O Israel. I, the Lord, made you and will not forget you. I have swept away your sins like a cloud. I have scattered your offenses like the morning mist. O return to me, for I have paid the price to set you free. <laughs> Jermaine, do you wish to follow Jesus all the days of your life? On that confession, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just make a decision. Of this is Brandy. Uh, Brandy made a decision to follow Jesus today. Yeah.
Here's what she says. I'm tired of who I was yesterday. I want Jesus to be my future. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you again to Larry and Angela. Angela is Brandy's boss at work. And uh, just what a great influence you guys have had. So thank you. Uh, Brandy, oh man, you're going to make me cry. (laughs) Have you put your faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins? And is it your desire to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Then based on your profession of faith, Larry is going to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let's get up, church, and celebrate the life that we've seen in Jesus. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my till I
not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Church, listen, the reality that Jesus rose from the dead is not limited to today. The fact that he did what he said he's going to do means all of his promises are for you from this day on. Go forward in the power knowing that you serve the risen king. God bless you. Have a great week. <laughs>